What I'm going to be talking about is um, human services in, in the state budget, and then the, the Department of Human Services within human services, and finally changes in the human services and Department of Human Services spending over the past decade. So first, as we've titled this, the story behind the headlines, um, last year at, during the budget debates, um, you would see headlines in the Providence Journal such as Rhode Island should cut social services in lieu of expanding sales tax, the business community says. At $3.1 billion, the state's human services budget accounts for nearly 40% of all state spending this year. And again, similar um, in the Chronicle of Philanthropy. Well, guess what? It's true that human services consumes 40% of the state budget, and that's both state and federal spending. Um, that covers, the way the budget is described is in six different categories that you see here. In um, education, that includes K-12 education, higher education, and actually public television. In public safety, that's the Department of Corrections, the AG's office, and the courts. General government includes administrative and all regulatory functions for our state. The governor's office, lieutenant governor's office, um, Department of Labor and Training is actually in that budget as well as uh, the, um, the Secretary of State's office and, and the Department of Revenue. Then we're going to talk about what's in the human services budget. Why are we spending 40% of our budget on human services? Um, so we can look within um, the human services budget and see that in human services is the Department of Human Services, the uh, Behavioral Health Disabilities, Developmental Disabilities in Hospitals, DCYF, the Office of Health and Human Services, the Department of Health, and then a couple of other smaller agencies which we'll talk about. But as you'll see, it turns out that within this human services spending are services that we all rely on in the Department of Health, keeping, um, you like clean water and safe food at restaurants, and somebody finding out when food is not safe, um, that's money that we're spending in the Department of Health. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're not, we know about West Nile virus or um, other communicable and infectious diseases, that's our Department of Health um, doing early warning and making sure that we're um, uh, we can be breathing clean air. Um, it also, the Department of Health is assuring quality care at health facilities and from our health professionals. Problems at nursing homes um, in terms of uh, safety, that would be the Department of Health that's going to go in and make sure that our um, seniors are safe in long-term care facilities. How about in the Department of Youth, Children, Youth, and Families? Many of you work on program, in the program areas funded by uh, the department, by DCYF. 71% um, of the funds in the department are spent on protecting children from abuse and neglect and strengthening families. That's the foster care system and subsidized adoption. And there's over a thousand children, a a thousand children in foster care. This also funds services for transition for children that are leaving the foster care system um, and uh, moving out into the community. 16% of DCYF's budget is for juvenile justice programs. There are up to 160 youth, mostly um, young men, at the training school. It also funds services for probation and parole for 1,000 youth, youth who are in the community. And then finally, 11% um, for behavioral health services for children uh, with serious emotional disturbances. That funds both residential services for those kids as well as community-based services. So we're, some of our human services budget is going to protecting our children and strengthening our families. Within um, BUDA, as has the, the greatest acronym of the human services agencies, um, that uh, agency, again, many of you are working in this area, provides services to adults with developmental disabilities. It's about 4,000 people um, living in our communities, either in some residential programs or living um, in, at home and receiving uh, day services. That's 48% of the Buddha budget. Ooh, that's a nice term. Um, for people with behavioral health issues, that's either substance abuse or mental health problems and serious mental health problems. About 14,000 uh, people are served by Buddha um, who receive substance abuse treatment programs and mental health services through our network of uh, community mental health organizations. 
26% uh, of the budget uh, funds about 281 people living either at Eleanor Slater Hospital or Zamborano Hospital, and that's long-term care for um, people with uh, serious psychiatric problems who cannot uh, uh, live in the community for a temporary period of time or in other uh, long-term care facilities, and also for um, older adults with serious psychiatric problems. Zamborano is serving people with some long-term care issues and, and also provides special, specialty re rehabilitative care. Um, the Office of Health and Human Services um, budget right now is uh, only $17 million. Uh, the, that office manages the organization design and delivery of all of the health and human services agencies. Its mission is to ensure high quality and integrated health and human services system and to administer the Medicaid program. And uh, I'm, we're going to next look at some uh, sort of pizza pie wheels that show the different segments of where monies are being spent. And when we sh if we show this again next year, you will see that OHHS will have a much larger piece of that pie because the Medicaid program has been moved out of the Department of Human Services and into OHHS. Um, finally, uh, there are a number of agencies that are funded that um, are the watchdogs in our community for people with disabilities and children in state care, and also uh, provide advocacy services for those groups of individuals. They're people with big responsibilities and fairly small budgets. So that's the Governor's Commission on Disabilities, the Commission on Deaf and Hardened Hearing, the Office of the Child Advocate, and the Office of Mental Health Advocate. So let's look now at that last, that 75% of the pie, which was the Department of Human Services, and let's see where we're spending our money within DHS, um, and talk a little bit about what we're getting for those dollars that we're investing through our tax dollars and through federal funds that are coming in. Uh, the Office of the Child Support Enforcement um, provides uh, Anybody in the state for $25 can use the Office of Child Support to pursue a child support order against a non-custodial parent. They're also the entity in the state that collects child support when families are receiving uh, cash assistance or medical assistance benefits. The SSI program, that little 0.8% um, of the DHS budget, is the state supplement that we give to uh, people with disabilities and seniors uh, it's a supplement to the federal payment that is made, and it brings people's income um, from about 70% of the poverty level up to 70% of the poverty level to 80% of the poverty level. So we're not even getting those folks to poverty level income, but we're investing a little bit so that um, their lives are a little bit easier. Um, elderly Affairs, which used to be its own department, is now within the Department of Human Services. And in that budget, you'll find the RIPAY program, uh, which provides subsidies for um, prescription drugs for people when they fall in the donut hole. Um, home care services, adult day services, protective services for vulnerable elder, elders, and through a 24-7 um, protective services hotline. And information and referral, wheel, Meals on Wheels, is also within that budget. Uh, in Veterans Affairs, uh, that includes the Veterans Home, which serves 339 vets, as well as uh, a broad base of community services, including counseling, substance abuse treatment, um, and other services. The Healthcare Quality Financial and Purchasing uh, Division uh, does the Medicaid claims processing, utilization review of hospitals, um, and it's all of the staff for uh, the Department of Human Services offices. So when people go, go to the Providence uh, Welfare Office or they go into the Woonsocket Welfare Office, all of those staff, staff's um, personnel costs are included. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that's in the individual and family support. Sorry. Um, uh, that, that budget in individual and family support also includes all of voc rehab. So there's a lot of federal funds that the state receives to provide vocational rehabilitative services for people with disabilities. All of those funds are in that budget. Rhode Island Works, um, you'll see FIP up there because I can't give up talking about the program as FIP, um, is primarily the federal TANF block grant, um, which is about $80 million. And in that budget is only $9 million in state funds. 
Uh, this includes the cash assistance for families um, and the subsidized child care program. It serves about 16,000 families on cash assistance and around 7,000 children who receive, receive subsidized child care. Finally, in state programs, and this is a good example of where if you looked at a number, you'd think, oh my God, we're spending all that money, 12.9% of the DHS budget is on state-funded programs. Well, not really, because within state programs is the SNAP program, and so 99% of all of the money in that line item is purely federal dollars for SNAP benefits. Um, the rest is a little bit of money that we provide for the general public assistance program for people who have shorter-term disabilities. And the SNAP program today is serving about 160,000 Rhode Islanders. So obviously the big um, kahuna here is medical benefits, which is our medical assistance program. And let's take a little bit um, of a little bit deeper look at medical assistance. So as Elena will um, discuss further, uh, the medical assistance Medical assistance budgets um, are across all of the human services agencies, but the largest part of medical assistance spending with, is within DHS, and that's um, providing medical services to about 122,000 children and, and families in our Right Care program, 40,000 adults with disabilities who are not developmentally disabled, and about 18,000 seniors. So about 48% of the spending in um, the Medicaid budget at DHS is for primary and preventive care, for Right Care, Right Share, Rhodey Health Partners, about 25% for long-term care in nursing facilities, and 14% um, for hospital costs. A little bit of medical assistance, it's just good to know this, how far the reach of medical assistance is, is that um, for kids who are in special education services in our local communities, those communities can recover some federal funds for the money that they're spending on certain services for those children. Um, so that's sort of the current where we're at in terms of the 2012 uh, budget and where funds are being spent. Hopefully you'd all agree that we get a pretty good bang for the buck in terms of those investments in human services. So when you hear human services are 40% of the budget, think about um, having clean water coming out of your faucet and uh, protecting us from communicable diseases, as well as providing a variety of service to, services to about 300,000 Rhode Islanders, whether that's SNAP benefits, medical assistance coverage, and being able to go to the doctor, being able to have food on the table, um, and know that that's what's in that huge chunk of funds. So let's look to the other headlines last year where, well, it's not only that we're spending too much money right now, and this should be a target for cuts, but oh my God, these, the funding has increased for human services way beyond what the growth in the state budget has been over the past 10 years. So the state budget has grown 48%, and in that same time period, human service agencies' budgets have grown by 73%. Um, in the Providence Journal, and again, in the Providence Business News. So let's look a little bit more deeply at that issue. Um, remember we had those six spending categories, right? Human services, education, public safety, natural resources, transportation, and general government. So what has happened over the 10-year period from 2002 to 2012? Well, the budget grew by close to 49%. And in those different um, categories, there have been different uh, variety of changes in um, those budgets. And you'll see that human services um, has not grown all that much faster than the overall budget. While we've seen some, a little bit faster growth in education and as well as um, in, in public safety. And now let's drill down into within the human services agencies, right, those agencies within that big 75%, um, let's look at what's been happening to those human service agencies' budgets over time. And I just want to point out that this is just showing you sort of the relative changes. Um, as we know, in um, the Medicaid budget, the DHS budget is a much larger budget than the other agency budgets. So as that grows by, a, by percentages, the amount of money is growing um, much faster than uh, the money in the other budgets. 
but it's important to know that's what's happening here because um, uh, within those budgets may be changes that have happened over time with new federal grants coming in or federal grants going away. So the changes are not always due to just to numbers of people coming onto programs, um, but there's a lot of information behind those relative changes that you have to know about to really understand what's going on. So we see here that those, um, those watchdog agencies have actually lost 31% of their budgets over the last um, 10 years. That within DCYF, that budget has gone down over 10 years by 3%. And we see an increase certainly in the Department of Human Services budget um, by close to 80% over that 10 year period. Um, but within DHS, Again, let's look at what's happened to some of those programs that we um, just talked about. And some of the, just to point out that some of what's behind these numbers, again, to know that it's important to know what's happening over the past 10 years is, for example, in 2002, the DHS budget did not include child support or the Department of Elderly Affairs. They were in separate line items that wouldn't be reflected um, in this budget. If you look at the individual and family support, line item, you might think that that's all personnel costs going up, but actually that includes some direct funding for the WIC program. If you looked at the state programs, the, um, again, close to a, <laughs> Kathleen is clapping, it's close to a 400% increase over the past 10 years, but remember that is primarily SNAP benefits, and what that reflects is that the number of, well, I don't have the data going back to 2002, but just from 2007 to 2011, SNAP enrollment grew from 76,000 people in our state to 160,000 people in our state. And the average benefit that people received went from $97 to $141. Um, and that reflects, I think, some of what uh, you know, Chuck referenced in terms of the decline of the middle class. Uh, we're not just seeing very low-income people get SNAP benefits through a number of policy changes that were led by some of our friends in the audience. Um, SNAP benefits are now available to people with income close to 200% of the poverty level, so it's a lot of working folks who are benefiting um, from the SNAP program to help them put food on the table. The in, on the other hand, uh, the sad news is the decrease in Rhode Island Works and the SSI program reflects policy changes that many of us in the room argued against, um, but nevertheless were enacted as part of budget changes. Um, for Rhode Island Works, that's reflecting the fact that uh, we now have a uh, very short time limit on benefits. We no longer have an entitlement to protect children um, and giving them cash assistance through their, um, as they're growing up. Uh, it also reflects the fact that the state has shrunk what it invests in, ch in the cash benefit for families to zero, so we spend no state dollars on uh, cash assistance to families. The SSI program reflects um, a hit that people with disabilities and seniors who get SSI benefits took as the state shrunk its part of the, of the benefit over the past 10 years. On the other hand, we see increases in the medical assistance program, and this really reflects two things. As we all know, because we experience this in, uh, when we go out to buy health insurance as employers or um, our shares as employee, the cost of health of healthcare has been steadily rising um, across the board. From 2001 to 2011, the average cost for family health premiums across the country increased by 113%. And we're also seeing more people coming onto the program um, through to the Right Care, um, Right Share program and the Rhodey Health program because more people are in need of health insurance coverage through the publicly funded sources as we see employers um, having a harder time providing benefits to people as people moved out of the workforce where they had health insurance and into onto unemployment. Um, some of those folks are coming onto our uh, healthcare programs and you know, thank goodness those programs are there so that people can continue to access the high quality care that uh, Right Care and Rhodey Health provide. There are about 6,500 more children and parents um, who have come onto the program between um, 2002 and 2010 and overall enrollment in grew, 
grew over that period of time by about um, 7%. So, uh, just to wrap up, um, I hope that what you gather from this presentation is that it really does make sense that the human services um, is the largest spending category in our state budget, that the Department of Human Services budget is the largest within human services, primary, primarily because of the medical assistance spending for health care, primary care, and long-term care that over the past decade, what we've seen in terms of changes is that spending for human services, that as writ large, did not grow much faster than total state spending. The growth in the Department of Human Services budget is largely due to increased spending for medical assistance programs. And that that growth in medical assistance reflects the overall increase of healthcare costs and also increased coverage for families and children and adults with disabilities. So we're going to move to drilling down now more into the medical assistance program.